is charging Chinese authorities of attempting to buy the influence of Canadian politicians and government officials with money and sex. Rob Anders, the member for Calgary West, says the efforts of the Chinese are more extensive and far worse than even CSIS head Richard Fadden claimed in an exclusive interview with CBC News. Fadden provoked a firestorm of criticism by saying Canada's spy agency suspects several municipal and provincial politicians that had fallen under the influence of foreign governments. Fadden was forced to back down, but Anders says he believes Fadden barely scratched the surface. Rob Anders joins me now uh, by phone. Mr. Anders, so you've made these allegations about what you have seen. What exactly have you seen? Well, uh, I know that when I've been on trips overseas, I have uh, seen, for example, uh, members of Parliament whose uh, family members have been uh, approached uh, offering uh, uh, sexual favours. I know as well, uh, for example, uh, members of Parliament have stories about being offered business deals that are too good to be true. Now, you say that you know of instances where people approached MPs families or friends. Do you know of instances where MPs and po federal politicians or provincial politicians were approached? Absolutely. I'm not going to divulge names because that's not my purpose. My, my purpose is not to engage in a witch hunt against my federal colleagues, uh, but I've had members of parliament tell me about how they had women follow them back up to their room in Shanghai and offer them massages. Uh, I've had uh, people talk about the karaoke experiences over there. Uh, I've had members of Parliament tell me about uh, business deals they were offered that frankly were above market rates and that they should have known better uh, that were, you know, uh, uh, veiled attempts to uh, create uh, or curry favor and influence. But how do you know that those were politically motivated things and it wasn't just something else? Well, in, in one circumstance, for example, I can think of a member of Parliament who was offered a trip over there, very lucrative, kind of five-star accommodations, etc., blah, 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 to be set up with business deals for them and, and their family members. Um, and the person who was offering that to them was trained in the Chinese equivalent of West Point. Um, now, I think you have to do a Venn diagram overlap when you have to ask yourself, what's the likelihood that you have somebody who's been trained in the Chinese equivalent of West Point who also has political connections, uh, who also has money to hand out, who also speaks uh, impeccable English uh, and happens to want to fraternize and give trips to politicians in Canada. When you do those five overlaps, what's the likelihood that that person isn't operating on behalf of that government and trying to peddle influence? Why won't you say who, uh, who has been approached? Because you understand that when Mr. Fadden made this uh, same statement, a lot of politicians were, being, were concerned that they were being painted with the same brush and that it was essentially a smear on politicians. Wouldn't it be better if you did, in fact, name who you know uh, who has been approached? Like I said, my, my job is not to do a witch hunt against given politicians or to end some political careers. Okay? It's also not partisan. I'm not singling out any given party. I, I'm doing this because I think it's important to inform and educate people as to the nature of the threat, and that for the sake of national security, it's important that we understand and, and, and we deal with these things up front and we speak the truth about them. Because if we don't, then we'll have other politicians who are naive and fall into these traps. Have you talked to the Prime Minister about it? Not specifically. Have you brought it to his office? Not specifically. Why, n why not? Because I know that when they were uh, going on their trips, uh, for example, uh, they were very well briefed by the Department of Foreign Affairs with regard to the very same thing that I'm talking about. And uh, they were probably the most uh, intensive briefings that the PMO ever had with regard to their foreign travel. So I know that they're, they're aware of these things. Uh, I was surprised when Mr. Fadden was asked all sorts of questions that I didn't have uh, some of the media, particularly the Parliamentary Press Gallery, contact me. But that's fine. They're busy. Uh, and now when I had uh, a story that was done with the Epoch Times, I find that we have more of the mainstream media wanting to pick up on it now, and I'm happy to talk about it. Do you know of any politician that has been compromised by an exchange of, of uh, you know, information or an offer of a, a prostitute or a gift and has then been pressured into saying something or doing something? Uh, let's put it this way. I know politicians who have done things that I think are antithetical to their character, and I also know those politicians to have been offered 
uh, things, whether they were lucrative business deals or sexual favors while they were over on foreign trips. Now, can I give you the smoking gun to say that I definitely know there's a link between the two? Probably not. Uh, but can I tell you that I think these things go on and I think it's, it's fairly obvious? Yes. But Mr. Anders, has it happened to you? Yes, ma'am. You have been offered sexual favors? Yes, ma'am. And what did you do? I, did, I didn't take them up, ma'am. But you were concerned about how it would be used against you? No, because I, I, I don't believe it's right. Uh, but uh, but I, I'm, sh I'm sure that those same offers were extended to other politicians. And statistically, from what I understand, 70% of males usually take those up. And you believe that those offers were in some way... Um, uh, were in some way offered through the Chinese government or through uh, politicians, or who do you think they came from? Well, let's put it this way. When you have a 60-year-old member of parliament uh, who's balding, overweight, bespeckled, and he gets hit on by a 20-something-year-old woman who's way out of his league, far more attractive, and is uh, pawing all over him, as opposed to all the other uh, more attractive men in the room, and wants to take him to karaoke and dancing and ply him with booze, I think you have to figure there's something up. Okay, but you don't have evidence that this is what happened. You don't have evidence that it was a Chinese government or official or institution behind, for instance, the offer that was made to you. I, I, I do have evidence in mind. I can think of specific examples, but that would, I'm not going to divulge names. Okay. What do you think can be done about this? You know, I, I think it's important that uh, we minimize their footprint. And if, and if they're using embassies or missions, uh, consulates, particularly missions and consulates, to advance those types of causes, uh, that we make sure we keep an eye on that and curtail that. Okay, Mr. Anders, thanks very much. Are you going to be here for caucus next week? Yes, ma'am. All right, well, we'll see you then, sir. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, the Prime Minister's office had no comment on the allegations saying that Anders speaks for himself.